So OpenAI just released fine tuning for GPT 3.5. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the three steps that you need to take to fine tune your own model and then deploy it. Okay, let's dive right in. So why would you even ever want to fine tune a model? So fine tuning a model is all about maximizing the output you get out of your model while also trying to reduce your API costs. So what does fine tuning actually do? Fine tuning normally provides much higher quality responses than you can just get from prompting. It gives you the ability to train your model on a lot more prompts than you would normally do in in prompt examples. So usually the best prompts, if you want to get ChatGPT to return a certain way, you will actually give a bunch of examples. So you will give an input prompt and then the example that it should output. So it actually sort of understands a lot more. The issue with this is that you can't actually fit that many prompts into the context window, especially if you want the output to be fairly long. And this comes on to the second benefit, which is token savings, right? So whenever you're calling an API, it's not you're not just charged on the output, the amount of tokens output, but also the amount of tokens input. So if you have a really, really big prompt with a lot of examples, that's gonna cost you a lot of money every time. But if you can pre-train your model, meaning you don't have to give it examples, you're gonna save a lot in API costs. And it also allows you to get lower latency requests. So what is the fine tuning process? As I said before, it's a three-step process. So first we've got to prepare and upload our training data. This is by far the longest and the hardest step to get right. Then we're gonna actually train, we're gonna start a fine tuning training job, and then we're gonna use the fine tuning model for our specific use case. I just want to go quickly over when not to use fine tuning, right? Because some people might think you need to use fine tuning for everything, but actually there are a few reasons why you shouldn't. Prompt engineering, you should always try prompt engineering and prompt chaining first before you actually go away and do a fine tuning model. Because fine tuning is way more time consuming and requires a lot more effort to actually set up. And that brings us on to the last point as well, is iterating over prompts it gives you much quicker feedback than doing a fine tuning model every time. Fine tuning A takes time and it costs money to actually fine tune that model straight away. What would you fine tune a large language model for? So for handling really complex requests and specific edge cases, setting the style, the tone, the format, improving the reliability of your output. So say you want the large language model to always output in JSON format because it's going to get read by a Python interpreter or something else, you will fine tune your model to only output JSONs. Or performing a, say, a new skill or task that is super hard to articulate. So that comes up to this benefits. And, and when I say hard to articulate, it's sometimes easier to show and not tell. Sometimes it's very hard to put together a really big you know, a prompt to explain exactly what you want to do. Whereas if you can just show ChatGPT the answers that you want to be receiving with the, the input prompt, that can be sometimes easier. And the other thing as well is that you can achieve similar quality to GPT-4 with a fine-tuned GPT-3.5 model. And this is exactly what I'm going to do in the fine-tuning. I'm going to use GPT-4 to help fine-tune GPT-3.5 for our specific use case. So the first thing, as I said before, we need to actually create our data set. So what does the data set look like? So they've given an example format here. So it's going to be a JSON-L file, meaning each line we're going to have a new JSON message with the input and the output. And also you can put a system message. So we're going to have the, we're going to have the input here and we're going to have the output. What we're going to do in this example, we're going to continue this. So this is Marv, a fictional chatbot that is also sarcastic. And we're going to take this, we're going to continue it, and we're going to pre-train a model on it. So what I did is went over to ChatGPT and got it to generate a bunch of messages exactly like this one. OpenAI say about 50 is the, the, the minimum number that you should pre-train your model on. That's when you actually start seeing, seeing some changes. So take this, use VS Code or whatever, ever, save it as a JSON-L file. I'm gonna use Google Colab, but you can use VS Code, whatever, to, to run this code. If you're using Google Colab, just make sure to upload your file in here. So we just do some quick installs, add your a OpenAI API key, give your location of your file. Here you can see we're just loading the file. So we've got 48, 48 rows of training data. 
And then what we need to do is upload the training file to OpenAI. So we do this, we openai.file.create, we send them the file with the purpose for fine tuning, and then we actually get the file ID back. So this is important. Next, we're gonna to need to start the training job. So we're gonna set a suffix. Suffix is basically the way you name your different models. So you're, if you don't have to put a suffix, but then you'll just get a bunch of models with a bunch of random numbers, and you won't be able to tell what they're for. So use suffix if you want to name your models. And then we're going to create the fine tuning job. We're going to pass in the train file ID, the model, and the suffix. And then we'll get the ID of the job back. So this will go away. This will set up a job. And usually for about 50 rows, maybe it'll take, it took me about seven, seven to 10 minutes. But if you have a much larger training data set, it's obviously going to take longer. And what we can do here is we can get we can use the dot retrieve to find what's going on. So as you can see, I've already ran my training. So it's gonna come back with status succeeded. And it's gonna tell me the amount of tokens that we trained on. If you hit this while it's running, it's just gonna say it's running. You can also find the steps. So if you do dot list events, you can give it the number of events you want and pass in the ID again, and then just print the steps. This will show you the training steps. So. As you can see, we're training on all the data and it's succeeding because our loss function is going down. If you're unfamiliar what a loss function is, it's basically how you train a neural network to get better and better at what you want it to do. So the lower the loss function, the better it is at doing what you're telling it to do. The greater the loss function, i.e. the more lossiness is happening in the system, the worse output it's actually giving. That's a very simple overview. And then we can retrieve the ID. So if we come back here, we're going to get the ID. So it's going to be fine-tuned GPT 3.5 Turbo 613 Bright Solution. So this is going to be, that's the name of my agency. This is going to be the name of your organization. So this is the suffix, and then this is your ID. So this is the full ID that you're going to need to actually call the model. So here we're just going to create a system message and a system prompt. What is Turkey, capital of Turkey. And then here we're going to call it. So instead of passing in GPT 3.5 Turbo, we're actually going to pass in our own model here, as you can see. So let's run this. Ankara, not Istanbul, surprisingly. And then if we run just normal chat GPT 3.5 Turbo, it's going to give us a different result. So this is how we know that our fine tuning has worked. And if you go back and have a look at the data set, it's giving a much shorter answer than GPT 3.5 because GPT 4 was outputting the shorter responses. So as I said before, go have a play around with this, but the hardest thing is to actually get a good training data set to use. And whether you use GPT 4 to, to create that data set, or you have your own data set from your own business, say it's customer response emails, and you have a certain way that you like to respond, you can also train GPT 3.5 to respond in that certain manner. Hey, so if you like this video and you're a company or an individual that needs some sort of AI solution built out, I've got an email in the description below. Let's get into contact.